Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the first chap first chapter series. So our next so in this episode we are going to be reading the first chapter of another Disney Chills um book series and it, the new book is called Liar Liar Head on Fire by Vera Strange. On the outside, 12-year-old Hector seems like he's got it all. He's strong, fast, and rumored to be the favorite to win this year's Zeus Cup at the Mount Olympus Spartan Run, the highest honor in his small Midwestern town. Hector's parents and his five siblings trained to win gold in their 12th year, but all fell short. Now, Hector is their last chance to bring glory to the family, and he's starting to feel the pressure. After a mysterious and extremely talented girl named May ob obliterates him at the practice run, Hector is desperate to do whatever it takes to win and makes his family proud. Cue a certain god of the underworld who has a mighty proposition for Hector. Hades will give him godlike strength and speed in exchange for the trophy at the end of the race. Seems like seems like a pretty good trade-off. But as Hector soon discovers, no deal with Hades is as straightforward as it seems. And he's going to have to go the distance or risk going from hero to zero. And if you notice my voice is a little down, it's because Prince Disney is asleep right now in his room. And so try not to be too, too loud, but hopefully you guys are able to hear me enough. All right, chapter one, the Zeus Cup. As soon as Hector woke up, he almost wished he hadn't. The alarm blared, jerking him from sleep and the dream he'd been having about running. His legs felt tired, even though he'd slept soundly the whole night. Running seemed to be the only thing he did lately, even while snoozing. He groaned and flopped over in his twin bed, feeling the softness of the worn flannel sheets and burying his head in the pillow to block out the alarm. When that didn't work, he flailed around until he hit the snooze button. His legs felt sore from training yesterday. He blinked in the dim morning light. It wasn't that he had to go get dressed and head to school like most 12-year-olds. He didn't. In fact, he didn't have to go anywhere. Hector was homeschooled, along with his three older brothers, and could take all his classes in his pajamas at, at the kitchen table. He was the baby of the family, and his brothers made sure to remind him of that fact on a daily basis. He didn't even have to brush his hair. Technically speaking, although it if he left it alone, his father would tease him for being lazy. His dark locks were curly and thick and grew in every direction, as if they had a mind of their own, reminding him of Medusa's snake hair. He'd learned about Medusa in their lesson on Greek mythology and found her fascinating. Sadly, his hair didn't endo him with any stone-stared death powers. Major bummer, he thought. Too bad he wasn't a Greek god or demigod, or whatever they were called. His dad's voice shot through his head, wise and stern and amused all at once. Son, you always need to put your best foot forward. That is, if you don't want to fall flat on your face, he added with a chuckle. He loved laughing at his own corny dad jokes, as he liked to call them. Hector wasn't sure how combing his hair had anything to do with his feet, but parents could be super weird like that. He rubbed his eyes, forcing them open. His room was the smallest room in the house, since he was the youngest Gomez brother, but it was bright and cozy. He had a beat-up wooden desk, an equally beat-up dresser, and a twin-size bed. As he yawned and stretched, he caught sight of his reflection in the mirror on the door. As predicted, his hair shot out wildly every which way. His brother's voices echoed through his head. Wonder Boy, 
Did you stick your fingers in an electric socket? Uh, door face, your hair sticking up like that doesn't actually make you taller. You're just an annoying little loser. But the truth was, Hector actually didn't mind. He knew they, they loved teasing him. Or, sorry, he knew they loved him despite the squabbling and teasing. Affectionately, known as the Gomez Four around town, they could get pretty rowdy around the kitchen table until Dad finally lost his patience and yelled at them to shut it or else. Usually the or else never actually materialized. Deep down, their father was a total softy, and they all knew it. The real trouble came if Mom was home and overheard them acting up during homeschooling hours. She was the real heavy in the family. But usually his mom was busy running their family store, Hero Sporting Goods, located right smack in the center of the Mount Olympus Town Square, which boosted one spotlight, a smattering of locally owned stores and quaint restaurants in an idyllic leafy park filled with white marble statues of Greek gods, the town's claim to fame. Well, that and the Mount Olympus Spartan Run. Ugh! Hector didn't even want to think about the Spartan Run, but unfortunately, he had no choice. There was no point in delaying the inevitable. Hector climbed out of bed before Mom could yell for him. Wonder Boy... Here, right, he muttered to his reflection. Sure, on the outside, he looked strong and fit and athletic. He'd been training for so long now that he was faster and could do more push-ups and pull-ups than almost any other kid his age, which is what had earned him the dreaded nickname. It also made him the favorite to win this year's Mount Olympus Spartan Run a grueling obstacle-based competition for local 12-year-olds. The annual race was only two short weeks away. It was also the reason for his daily misery. Hector was finally old enough to qualify for the race, having just turned 12 a few weeks ago. And he did look the part of Wonder Boy, but instead, but inside, he didn't feel strong. He felt weak and unworthy of the cup, the Zeus cup. Hector pictured the shiny golden statue molded into the form of ancient Greek god Zeus. He knew that Zeus wasn't just any god. According to Greek mythology, he was the god of the skies and thunder and the ruler of all the gods on Mount Olympus. But that trophy was the bane of his existence. He wished that it didn't exist. Or rather, it could exist, but he wished that his family didn't care so much about him winning it. Making it worse, it wasn't just his family who cared. It was everyone in the whole town. Winning the cup was the highest honor in his quaint, idyllic, Midwestern town. Idyllic, but boring. Not much ever happened here, except the race. It was literally the only thing the town was known for. The race itself dated back over 100 years to the founding of the town by immigrants from Greece. Today, the town was much more diverse than it had been back then. And everyone in his family had trained for the race when they were 12. His father, his mother, his three older brothers. But they'd all fallen short of winning the prize cup. His oldest brother, Phil, came the closest, but he finished in second place, and second didn't earn you the cup. Now it was up to Hector to win the race and bring, it, and bring the trophy home for his family, but the problem was he didn't care about winning the cup. He hated training. He hated competing. He hated pretty much everything about the race. But nobody had ever asked him what he wanted. Hector would have much rather spent his time working on his true love, photography. Out in nature, snapping landscape photos or capturing candid portraits was when he felt most alive. 
a few years ago, he discovered his dad's old cannon in the basement, covered in dust, and salvaged it. Ever since then, he couldn't stop taking and developing pictures, experimenting with different shutter speeds and saturations to create new sorts of images. But his family thought that artsy stuff was just a waste of time. That time that Hector should spend training. Phil was always on his case, pushing him to focus harder on his athletics and not waste time snapping pointless photos of random stuff that nobody even cared about. The problem was, Hector cared. He'd even bought special cleaning products to care for the lens. Using the money, he saved up working at Heroes on the weekends with his family. Ugh, I don't want to train today. His eyes flicked to the overstuffed athletic bag shoved in the corner and chock full of gear. Sweats, running shoes, special powder to keep his hands dry while scaling walls and climbing ropes. Heroes Sporting, sporting Goods was emblazoned on the side of the bag, advertising their shop. It wasn't like he had a choice. After homeschooling was finished, Dad and the boys pitched in at Heroes, helping their mother restock the merchandise. Everything from baseballs to lacrosse sticks to rock climbing equipment and everything in between. And running the checkout counter, then closing up the shop and sweeping the stoop at the end of the business day. But lately, Hector had to train at the local field every day, and Phil was his coach. Even though he was only 16 years old, there was no better coach in town, and he drove Hector super hard. Maybe he could pretend he was sick today. Like deathly about to die kind of sick. That was unlikely to work, though. His mom could sniff out lies, even virtually over text. Maybe he could just beg for a single day off, one measly day of rest. But he knew that wouldn't work either, not in the Gomez family. Training was the most important thing, even more important than school, though his parents wouldn't admit that, at least not if somebody else was listening. In fact, athletes was the family's business, not just their business, but their life. They all lived and breathed and obsessed over the annual race, all except Hector. Outside his bedroom door, he could hear the house beginning to stir and awaken around him. The squawking of alarms and creaking of stairs and doors. The sound of his older brother squabbling over who got to shower first. No fair, Phil, Luca gripped, banging on the bathroom door. You went first yesterday and used all the hot water. Leave me alone, Phil's muffled voice shouted back. I'm the oldest. That means I get first dibs on shower time. They only had one bathroom for the kids, so it was always a morning battle. Another voice echoed through the house, this one higher pitched. Hey, what, what about me? Juan added to the morning cacophony, his voice crackling. You're last. Both Phil and Luca yelled back at the same time. Well, except for Wonder Boy, Phil added, making all three brothers crack up. We all know he gets a cold shower. Still in bed, Hector rolled his eyes. Besides, the joke was on them. He'd been showering at night before bed when there was plenty of hot water left. The smell of bacon drifted down the hall, mixed with the rich aroma of coffee burbling into the coffee maker. That meant it was banana, pancake, and bacon day, his favorite day. Hector stood up and stretched. It wasn't that he didn't have a nice life. He had a goofy, loving family and a comfortable home, even though his large family stretched its limits at times, and his brothers were his best friends. But there was all this pressure around the race. He just didn't get it. Hector often felt like an outsider in his family like he didn't fit in or belong. When he was younger, he once asked his parents if he was adopted, much to their abject horror. They quickly assured him that while he may have been a little bit of a surprise 
He was definitely their child. You're a gold miss, son, his father said, patting his shoulder. Should I congratulate you or apologize? Oh, stop it, Pedro, Mom said, playfully slapping Dad's shoulder. We both know you should apologize. They each chuckled, not noticing the crestfallen look on Hector's face. It wasn't that he didn't want to be part of their family. Truly, he did love them. It was just that he couldn't understand why he felt so different. It was a mystery. Even his parents seemed baffled at times by his lack of enthusiasm over competing for the Zeus Cup, despite his best efforts to try to fake it. His eyes flicked to what he truly loved, his camera. It sat in the worn old bag on his desk, labeled Canon. All I want to do is take pictures, but nobody understands me, he thought, feeling, well, anxiety and misunderstood. That was his usual state of being, though he tried his best to hide it. Hector, you're late for school, Mom called from the kitchen, snapping him out of his usual morning pity party. Don't make me call you again. Coming, Hector yelled quick, quick, quickly. He knew better than to argue with his mom, especially before she had her minimum two cups of coffee. None of the Gomez for wanted to be late for homeschool, even though there was no bell to signal that were that they were tardy, or principal's office to get set to sent to if they misbehaved. While Dad was their teacher, a role which he relished and gave his all, Mom functioned as their principal. Suffice to f suffice it to say, no one wanted to get sent to her office. With a deep sigh, and before his mother could call for him again, Hector turned away from the camera bag. He got dressed and ran his fingers through his hair, though it didn't help and probably made it worse, and sauntered into the kitchen for breakfast and homeschooling. Hector actually looked forward to the school part of his day. He liked learning new things. What he didn't like was what he would come right afterward. Training, training, training. And look, more training. There's the wonder boy dad called from the kitchen table, looking stronger every day. Thanks to your brother here, he clapped Phil on the shoulder, making him wince. Dad might look like, well, a normal middle-aged dad with thinning hair and a poncy stomach, but he was still almost as strong as he'd been in his teen years when he trained for the race, just like everyone in their family. This is our year, Mom added from the kitchen where she was slurping coffee. Her long, dark hair was tied back into a crisp braid. She was dressed in her usual work uniform, a red hero shirt paired with khakis and athletic sneakers with a yellow lightning bolt. Yeah, nothing can stop this kiddo. Phil added with a wink. Plus, he's got a secret weapon that makes him go faster. Yeah, farts, Lucas said, careening into the kitchen and letting out a loud fart sound by pressing his hands to his face and blowing on them. I meant my coaching, Phil shot back, but then Juan cut him, cut him off. Magical fart powers, Juan added, giggling like the little monster he was and chasing after Luca in the kitchen while they both made farting noises, trying to outdo each other. Stop it, Mom started, swatting at them. But she couldn't help it. She snorted a laugh, spraying out coffee. Then the whole family broke out in raucous laughter. Hector giggled, feeling better already. Just when he felt too much pressure, his brothers always had a way of lightening the mood. Dad slapped the table joyfully, tears leaking from his eyes. Oh, these are definitely my kiddos, he managed between chuckles. That's right, I blame you, M Mom said, trying to sound stern. But her smile betrayed her true feelings. Hector felt lucky to have parents who still generally adored each other. Okay, enough goofing around, Mom said, getting hold of herself and swallowing the last of her coffee in one gulp. 
Time for school, and time for me to get to work. Somebody has to bring home the bacon. She added, sliding a fresh plate of it onto the kitchen table. As Hector settled into a chair and opened his workbook, he felt a more serious mood de descend over him. He tried to focus on his work, but he could already hear Phil's voice coaching him to run faster, climb higher, train harder. Phil was even more on edge lately because the last preliminary race was two days away, and the real deal, the Mount Olympus Spartan run to claim the Zeus Cup, was in two short weeks. Hector knew he should be excited, but he just couldn't wait for it to be over.